Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Dear Podcast. On today's episode, I will be talking about comfort zone and more so how to get out of your comfort zone because I do know from personal experience that sometimes when you're so close to getting out of your comfort zone, when you're so close to make that final step to do something new or try something different or start something new, you get kind of pushed back by your fears. So in this episode, I will be sharing you some of my tips on how to overcome those very last fears. So when we're talking about comfort zones, I do feel that it's obviously really depends from person to person. Because for some, when they say that they are going out of their comfort zone, it could mean that they are going up to a stranger and talking to them. Whereas for others, it may be something that's more of a drastic change. So either moving abroad or or switching jobs, or going to university, or dropping out from university, or starting a YouTube channel, or writing a book. And if you do have something that you have been postponing for way too long, or you have been wanting to do something, but you're not exactly sure if you want to do it, then I do hope that this episode will give you that final push of courage to actually do it. So without a longer introduction here, let's get straight into it. For me personally, one of the main things that used to hold me back when trying something new or putting myself more out there and getting out of my comfort zone, I was always, always stuck on other people's opinions of me or other people's judgments uh, about me just because I never wanted anybody to think badly about me or judging me for for my decisions also being a people pleaser from from a young age then I always went, wanted to make sure that everybody else was happy with my decisions and that everyone around me would agree and accept my decisions I most often stayed in my comfort zone and very rarely did I go out of it unless I had the validation or or acceptance from those around me to to do that and this didn't change much until the end of high school actually after high school I decided to take a different path than the normal traditional path so instead of going to university I did not (laughs) period that's it I did not go to university and I did get a lot of a lot of kind of feedback or response to it that I didn't really expect but I was getting comments on how it was a really stupid decision for me and how I'm wasting my potential and how I am basically setting myself up for failure because I decided not to go to university. So after after I decided to not go to university and after I stuck by my decision, even though people told me to st- kind of try to force me to go to university, I still stuck by my decision. And I think this is what gave me the courage and trust within myself to keep going out of my comfort zone and to keep trying new things and not maybe doing what everyone else is doing. Because with with going to university and what I mean, what I mean that university would have been in my comfort zone, I saw that as a safety, I saw it as a safe option. Because traditionally, people go to school, they go to university, they find a job, they settle, they live their life retire and that's it and this for me at the time was a predictable future and I didn't want that I didn't want to have everything figured out and everything set in place as soon as I went to university obviously if you go to university it doesn't mean that you're gonna find a job right after after university and settle there but that was the general idea I had or how I view how I viewed it at the time and I felt like I didn't want to live this I didn't want to live the same life that everybody else was living basically and so I decided to do something else. And yes, it was really scary. And yes, I was really hesitant about it. Like nowadays, it doesn't affect me that much. However, I have still had interactions where I'm talking with somebody and then university comes up and then I state that I haven't gone to university and I can sense how their attitude towards me changes. Sometimes it does change to a negative way where I feel that they are kind of looking down on me that's not really nice but I mean to each their own opinion right now I can tell that I'm really happy with my decision and I'm happy that I didn't let everyone else's opinions change my own just because I knew at the time that was right for me and also I I will be making a different episode about university and why I decided not to go but I knew at the time that that was the right decision for me now when I think about it I'm thinking that if at the time five years ago 
if I would have let everyone else make that decision for me and kind of peer pressure me to go to university. In that case, I wouldn't have all of the experiences that I do right now. I wouldn't have met all the amazing, wonderful people that I would have met. And I obviously there are great, amazing people in, in the university as well. But just from my perspective of being able to go travel abroad, live abroad, volunteer abroad, I know that I wouldn't have met these people if I had gone to university. And I'm so, so grateful because the friends that I made over the past years when I've been traveling and doing my own thing, I'm so grateful that I didn't go to university, that I didn't let other people's opinions affect me because I'm so happy for the friends and for the people that I have in my life right now. And it's just... I can't imagine not having met those people and not being friends with those people. But coming back to the point of other people's opinions, what I also think quite often, for example, with this podcast, I did want to do it for the past few years, but I I was always so, so scared for many, many reasons, because I was like, oh, I'm going to do it in English, I'm Estonian, and maybe people are going to have a few says about that. I just got insecure for doing it in English as well. When I put it into perspective, in five years time, will I be regretting that I made a podcast and some people thought X, Y, C of it? Will I be regretting the fact that I actually tried something, put myself out there? I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be regretting that. Whereas five years down the line, if I'm thinking like, oh, I wish I would have made a podcast, but I didn't because I was so afraid what everybody else would say. I'm pretty sure I will be regretting this more. And when it comes to people's opinions in general, and again, it doesn't have to be a big thing. Like I gave an example from uh, from the university decision. Uh, I can do another small example that, again, would probably give you a better insight on what I mean here. In 2020, I really wanted to start on my Instagram. I really wanted to talk about like body image, body acceptance, body positivity at the time. I don't really agree with the body positivity movement as a whole anymore but at the time I really connected with it Mm, and I wanted to share my own thoughts on it as well and I remember I made this Instagram post and I had the caption and everything all set for like two weeks and the picture and everything and the post itself I had in my drafts for like two weeks but I was so so afraid to post it because because I was thinking like what is everybody else gonna think because at the time I wasn't that open about anything I was posting really general things and nothing too nothing too different or out there so I remember when I made that first uh, body positive Instagram post and if you're following me on Instagram I'm gonna share it in my stories as well after this episode has been uploaded so you know what I'm referring to but anyways when I made that body positivity post I was so scared of how people are gonna react because I was thinking that maybe everybody's gonna unfollow me because it's stupid or maybe people are gonna think it's cringe even though I don't think cringe was a thing at the time but I was still really anxious and hesitant to share that and I remember after I posted it and I'm not kidding I deleted the Instagram app from my phone because I was just that anxious and I just went on YouTube and watched like a random YouTube video trying to distract myself for like the first hour it was up because I was just so I had no idea what was the reaction because a lot of the people that were following me at the time or still are were my friends the post that I made that was more out there it wasn't just like oh I'm just like posting a fun picture from holidays it was actually me being like this is how I feel and I was just being really open and honest and I had no idea how anybody would receive it so I remember about an hour later after I had tried to distract myself with some YouTube videos I went back on Instagram and I had the nicest response ever and I had so many people message me that I didn't even think would care or would be impacted by what I shared I feel like I opened this whole new level of Instagram for myself where I was able to talk about body image and I was able to share my experience with body dysmorphia and have people either relate to it or agree to it or just resonate with it on some levels and talk about it as well and I felt so seen and heard and now again I have so many of these smaller moments where I've made something or where I've done something where I was afraid of what other people would think and then the result was the complete opposite. So a lot of the times the what ifs are the bad scenarios like what if people are going to say that, what if people are going to hate that 
but I never thought like what if people are gonna like it what if people are gonna agree with what you're saying now thinking back I'm so glad that I shared this post four years ago because I really don't care as of today for example I don't care if anybody thought something bad about it or if anybody was like oh why would you say that it doesn't affect me anymore and also the people that were following me at the time I don't even know if they follow me anymore people in general in your life they come and go and those who are not willing to accept you you know trying to become a different version of you or trying to grow into a different person a better person hopefully if they can't can't accept that, then they don't really need to be in your life because you wouldn't want that energy in your in your life because it doesn't if they don't support your either dreams or goals or ambitions aspirations, they don't need to be there and their opinions simply don't matter. And one more bit of an example here is that when I finally decided to make this podcast, I remember I messaged one of my friends because he just messaged me randomly. We haven't we hadn't chatted in a month or two. I just decided to tell him that I'm starting this podcast and I had no idea how he was going to react because I know that he's he has always been really supportive of everything I've done and I appreciate him and this friendship for that very reason because I have always felt such strong support from him. And I remember when I told him that I'm starting this podcast and the first thing he was, was like, okay, how can I help? Do you need any help with like, uh, with the audio or with the, any music themes, whatever? Do you need any help with anything? And he was just there to help me. And that's when I realized, I was like, you know what? I have at least, I know I have at least one friend on whom I can count on. And for sure, I know who will listen to my podcast that I don't even need, like, that's all that I need. That was all that I needed to actually make this podcast into reality was this one push, this one support. So if your friends are not supporting you in getting out of your comfort zone and are not kind of pushing you to go out of your comfort zone, then I would suggest to, you know, have a little filter out your friends there not like dump all your friends but your friends should be supporting you and what anybody else thinks any random acquaintance person that doesn't concern you because also on instagram where again i share a lot of a lot of personal topics and i talk a a lot about my personal life and personal experiences and i know that maybe not all people agree with it or share the same share the same opinions or maybe they might even have some negative things to say, which, especially with body image and body dysmorphia topics, I remember I did have quite a few negative responses. Whatever negative energy they put, whoever puts out there, I just don't, I don't claim it. I, I'm not taking this negative energy into my energy circulation here. Now I've learned to step away from it and to distance myself from, from that because I know that if somebody says anything negative about me, it's not really about me, it's about themselves. They're just reflecting their insecurities or their issues on me. So I just don't take it really negatively. If you want to do something right now in your life, like you want to start something new or you want to, as I said, maybe you want to go travel, maybe you want to start, write a book, maybe you want to have your own little small business doing whatever. If you're scared of what other people think, then just think of yourself down the line in the next five years and think if you're going to regret the fact that you did something that you wanted to do and people had their opinions or that you let everyone else's opinions affect you so much that you didn't you didn't pursue your dreams, your goals, your ambitions. I'm going to give you a moment. Just marinate in this little segment that we had right now when it comes to friends, family, acquaintances and other people's opinions okay so I feel like we have taken a breather I hope you're ready for my next point on why you should step out of your comfort zone and why you should do whatever you want to do but again here I would like to emphasize that I do support people doing whatever they want to do I do support people following their goals ambitions and living their life how they want to live it however I do have a a but here. As I said, I support anything and everything anybody wants to do, any of my friends. I support them fully until it affects somebody else negatively. And what I mean by this, quickly before we get into the next point, is that you can do whatever you want to do in your life, 
but it cannot and I mean it cannot have a negative impact on anyone else you can't purposely do something that harms somebody else if that makes sense I support all of my friends decisions until it has a negative impact on purpose on somebody else okay just want to have it out there that's what I mean when I say like go out of your comfort zone go do your thing but I support you until you do it for you and not to actually harm somebody else I just feel, felt like I had to. I had to put this out here as well. Another thought process that I usually like to have when I'm not sure if I want to do something or I'm not sure if it's the right thing to do is that I think of my 70, 80 year old self and I think how would she feel if I did or did not do something? Would she be happy that I didn't do something or would she be ki- or would she be regretting like oh, I wish I would have done that when I was 24. I wish I would have done that when I was 22. I'm trying to eliminate all the possible regrets my older self could have. And also with this being said, sometimes if you want to do something that's a bit silly, a bit out there, a bit out of your comfort zone, my favorite thought is do it for the plot. I'm like, this could be a good story. This is a potential for a good story for the future. This is, for example, a reason why I've done... A lot of last minute travel plans or travel changes or agreed for many last minute plans in general just because I'm like this could be a good story and with doing things that are out of your comfort zone I feel like I'm saying comfort zone so much I should find another word but I don't think nothing really takes it together as well as comfort zone does when I'm thinking of doing something out of my comfort zone I honestly and if I'm scared of it I always think First, as I said, I think of my older version. If she would be, how would she feel if I did or didn't do something? But then I'm also thinking of my younger version. Because I know right now, recording this episode, I know that the, whatever, 16, no, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 year old Caroline would be over the moon happy to finally realize that I decided to make this podcast, that I'm actually recording an episode, I'm actually uploading it for people to listen. Like, the younger version of me would be so, so, like, just so happy to hear about this. And that's another thing, when I'm thinking of doing something that's out there, or I just know that the younger me would be so, so happy to see that. For example, when I'm sharing things on Instagram that are more personal, especially when it comes to mental health, I know that the younger me would be just so happy that I am now the person that she used to need. And then one more good thing that I've seen, I think, on TikTok or Instagram when it comes to making, when you're thinking of making a decision or you're hesitant, and when all of those bad what-if thoughts flood your mind and like, what if this goes bad? What if I fail? Whatever negative what-if thoughts you have, try to reprogram them into positive ones and it can be hard at first I'm not gonna lie it can be hard however the more you do it the more you get into the habit of seeing the good outcome so for example with this podcast at first I was like what if nobody listens what if nobody likes it what if nobody thinks the same way but then I turned it into a way of what if people are going to enjoy listening to this What if people are going to find something from these episodes that are going to help them in any way, shape or or form? I just turned it the other way around. Because whatever you, whatever expectations you set out, quite often this is the result as well. By putting my attention towards those possible positive outcomes, it made me more motivated to do it. And at least I know, for example, with this podcast, that again, I know that I've tried. And then my final, my final, and this is favorite, and I mean my favorite thing ever when I'm hesitant about doing something or, and it doesn't have to be, as I said, it doesn't have to be something big. It can be something small. It can be like talking to a stranger or saying something to a stranger or striking up a conversation or doing anything like that. So if I need a final push to do something, then my last encouraging thoughts are the following. And you're going to laugh at this, so just bear with me. But I literally think YOLO. <laughs> I I actually think YOLO, like you only live once and you're on this floating rock. You only live once. You will never, ever, ever, ever 
be in the same body, with the same mind, with the same people around you. You will never have this experience. You will never have this exact moment right now that you're listening. You will never have it again. Never. And that's it. You just lost that moment. You're you're not going to have it again. Unless I keep repeating myself here. Uh, But you'll never have the same moment again. So why not just do it? Like, we are on a floating rock somewhere in the universe. We know so little about this universe that we're existing in. Why not just do it? Again, if it doesn't harm anybody else, if it is directed at a positive outcome, what is the harm? Like, why don't just do it? In 100 years, 200 years, it won't really matter if you did or didn't do anything. But right in this moment, it matters. Okay? So maybe you're thinking like, oh yeah, we're on this floating rock, so nothing matters. But the beauty is that nothing matters. So whether you decide, for example, I don't want to bring this podcast as an example again, but with this podcast as an example, in 100, 200, 300 years, will it actually matter that I made this podcast? It probably, there's no impact there. But in this moment right now, in my life right now, it has an impact and it has it has had a positive impact and it's something that I want to do. So why not just do it? Even though in the next centuries, it probably is irrelevant. But in this moment, this is what makes me happy. This is what brings me joy. So why not do it? And you can do whatever you want to do. You can live whatever life you want to live. But just make sure that it's the life that fulfills you. Make sure that you're doing something that is actually fulfilling. That you actually want to do. So by getting out of your comfort zone, by expanding your comfort zone, you are allowing yourself to live your life to the fullest. You are allowing yourself to do whatever you desire to do. So this last bit, it really got me thinking. I had to take a moment there. But to wrap it up, we live on a floating rock. Nothing matters. And that's the beauty of it. You literally only live once. You will never, ever, ever have the same moment again. Other people's opinions won't really matter because... The only person that you're going to have in your life throughout your whole life is you. Every other person, they can come and go. You never know. But you are the only constant in your life. The only person whose opinion matters is yours when it comes to your decisions. And thirdly, or fourthly, whatever number we're at, what if this scary thing you're avoiding doing is actually going to be the best thing ever? What if this scary thing leads you to the best version of yourself, to the best life that you could ever live. What if? What if there's just like this little small step between your current self and your best self ever? Like, And what if it's that thing that you have been avoiding to do? One more thing is that at some point, you're going to get so fed up with being scared to do things, to honor yourself, to live the life you want to live. You're going to get so fed up with yourself that you're just going to do it. Like, I know from myself with again with this podcast I got so fed up with being so afraid for whatever reason for so many years that I just decided to I was so fed up with being scared and I just did it so you're either gonna do it now or you're gonna wait a few months maybe a few few years you're gonna get fed up with yourself for not doing it any sooner and you're gonna do it then but there is no better time than right right now there is no better time okay and one last thing that makes me not want to have any regrets is the posts that I see on Instagram and on TikTok of older people who are like 70, 80 plus and their biggest regrets in life were being too scared or not doing what they actually wanted to do and living in the shadow of other people and doing what everybody else wanted to do and they never had the chance to actually live the life that they would have wanted to live. And I know that I don't want to have those regrets. I don't want to be thinking of those things when I'm 70, 90. I want to have the exact opposite thoughts. I want to be so happy and content that I chose to live the life that I wanted to live. That I don't have any regrets. My goal is in life is to have no regrets, basically. Yeah, I think I'm going to wrap it up here with this little old people moment. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. I did get a sidetrack quite a few times, but that's that's how I talk to my friends. That's the experience that my friends have, and that's the experience that you're going to have if you're listening to this podcast. As I said, I do hope that you enjoyed this episode. I would really, really appreciate feedback on it. And if you'd like, you can share with me the last thing that you did that was out of your comfort zone that you were scared to do. Hopefully this episode motivated you to do 
the next thing on your list. Thank you for listening. And I will speak to you next week. Bye.